Chris Petri here. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming by. We're actually going to have a great time. We're going to do this beautiful coastal scene with um, a, a nice tree along the um, ocean. We have uh, some foreground here with shadows. We have our photograph up uh, on this video right here. So we're going to work right from this photograph right here. Uh, Brenda, who's one of our fellow artists, watercolor artists, she sent in uh, some uh, photographs uh, to my email. Um, I, I think she's a professional uh, photographer. She takes some really beautiful photographs, and so we have a few of them that we can use uh, for painting purposes and uh, creating some beautiful content here and some compositions. So we, I'm using this uh, tree that she sent along the ocean here, just a beautiful, some of my favorite uh, subject matter here, the beautiful ocean, the sand, the water, the rocks, the tree, just beautiful sunlight coming across early morning or late afternoon. Um, so beautiful light. So let's, uh, we'll get really, uh, geared up for this. We're going to, we have our palette. We're going to mix all our colors. We're going to show you every step of the way how to do this painting. We're going to cover all the colors we're going to use. We're going to actually do a sketch first. So you'll sketch out your tree first and your ocean, your distant shoreline uh, over here and your distant, uh, horizon line where the, um, far out ocean is where the, um, darkest line as you can see out here in the distance so we'll cover how you're going to lay this all out on your paper with your brush we're going to use a ruler to get our straight line across here for the ocean we're going to draw the tree we're going to basically just use this photograph right here and carefully take our time and do this drawing once that's done then we're going to start getting the paint on we're going to use some really beautiful dark colors here we're going to mix all these darks here, the French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt siennas for the darks. You're going to see all this details here on this uh, video. So you can create this uh, wonderful painting. And I'm hoping that you'll, uh, if you don't want to paint it right away, and maybe you're, this is your first time, welcome here. If you've never been on my channel before, welcome. If you're thinking about starting watercolors, a perfect time. You're at the right place at the right time. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, watching a few videos and if you think you're interested it's n really a lot of fun i have a lot of beginners videos so you can look up my uh, channel um, you can subscribe below and you'll see that i always am putting out beginner videos as well as these are more advanced but you can also paint along too if you're a beginner with this type of painting it's really um just a matter of um if you're just starting out you would just do more of a simple version with using more of a simple palette and not maybe using two paints. You'll use the Prang. So I'll cover all that in the beginner videos. You'll see those. But if you subscribe, you'll be able to kind of follow along. And uh, in any case, let's get started in just a few seconds. But this is the painting. Beautiful uh, washes of color. Um, and we're going to have a fun time. So get set and uh, get your uh, paper ready, brushes, paints. And um, we'll get started in just a second. All right, so we just saw the finished painting, and we're going to get started here. Brenda, again, we um, are one of our fellow artists here on YouTube that paints along with us uh, each week. Um, Brenda sent in some photographs. Uh, she sent me about a, a dozen photographs, some um, really beautiful, um, kind of like a lot of shore, um, things along the uh, coast and the shoreline. I think she sent me like a boat and some uh, birds along the coast, and we have this tree, beautiful tree here right on the uh coastal area here so we're going to do this um and uh, let's get started so i i already I just started you know doing some roughing out some things on the paper here so i just went with um with the uh the horizon line across here i went i went with a just a light pencil line so i have the distant ocean horizon line right about here and then this coast, oh, oh, that's actually the shoreline here is a little bit on an angle, so you can kind of see it goes this way, like so, across on an angle. We have that. And then the tree is not about halfway, it's just a little bit to the left of the, the center of the picture. So the tree is like about here. So we'll just make a little line there to say, okay, that's going to be where our tree trunk is, the start of our drawing of our tree here. 
and let's keep moving on here and uh, there's lots of roots we can see so I'm just going to start drawing in some interesting roots and things like that here along the coastal area there and then we have the tree come up and then right about there we had we have the first branch that's sort of coming out here like so so I'm just going to try to as best I can capture these branches as best I can do like that and they get a little thicker here and I'm not trying to go for perfection here going to try to just do the best I can here and this is a fun exercise and doing some really interesting uh, tree limbs and uh, branches And I'll just keep drawing along here. So what I'm trying to do is just uh, follow along here with the uh, photograph. And again, it's not perfect, but if you can kind of try to get the best, the best that you can, the drawing close as you can to what you're looking at. And I think I can see that I've gone um, off the... Uh, script here so to speak i think i've done a few things that are not on the on the on the photograph but again don't worry about it if you're kind of getting the sense of everything pretty well you won't have to worry about that and All right, I think that looks pretty good there. So we have that portion completed and then we'll do a little more of the shoreline here. There's some water over here on the bottom of the uh, picture frame here. So there's some shoreline over here by the tree trunk and then there's some more water here and there's some more 
like that. There's some more shoreline over here. There's lots of water over here. Like that. And then there's some more branches and things over here. So we'll do a few more branches over here. And maybe some driftwood. So there's some driftwood and branches. And then maybe there's some more interesting uh, tree trunk over here and roots. And then there's some rocks. So we can, we can do some rocks over here. And there's quite a bit of rocks over here too. Like this. And then we can just kind of make some marks with our pencil so that we know when we're painting we're going to try to make some rocks over here. So I'll just make some dots with my um, pencil just so I know that I'm going to make some rocks there when I uh, come back over here and uh, with my paintbrush and paints. So we're going to come back in a second or two with our paints. Um, so you're going to see how we have the water and the sand bars here and uh, the uh, shoreline over here and the distant water here and the tree. So we're going to kind of have all of these interesting things all come together um, on this painting. And I'm going to paint this a la prima. So I'll do the darks first, um, which will be the tree uh, trunk and the tree limbs, things like that. And then from that point on, we'll get some lighter washes for the water in the sky. So, all right, let's take a quick break. I always mention, um, please take breaks as you go if you have to. I always like to take breaks, um, kind of like recharge my uh, batteries, so to speak, or re, uh, recalibrate my concentration levels as I come back in and start to paint. So I do my drawing first, then I take a break, and then I come back and I mix up some paints and... I start painting. I hope you'll do the same. Um, let me know how that works out. You're the artist. You have to kind of experiment with your um, techniques, your methods, your ways of doing things. So I always try to mention how I do things. Um, you know, maybe you're going to do things a little differently. That's fine. Or whatever, um, you know, you like to do as an artist, you'll do that. Um, you know, I'm just offering ideas. That's really all I do here. I'm just trying to offer ideas. And then there's certain things also too, that I think are really fundamental to watercolor. And I'll, you know, suggest that you definitely do those things. So, um, that would be, uh, getting a good solid drawing here first. And then once we have that done, then we'll come in and we'll start doing our washes and then we'll take the a la prima approach, um, here versus let's say the, um, glazing technique. So we're not going to really cover this all with a wash and then, uh, let it dry and then go over with a darker um, bit of uh, tonal values and uh, go over with the darks of the picture. We're going to do the darks first, uh, which is the a la prima method. You start out doing just everything at one time, and usually we'll start with the darker main subject matter, let's say, at, uh, first, and then we'll do our lighter washes when we're finishing up the painting. Okay, so let's uh, take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, let's keep going here and get our paints mixed up. So I'm going to use uh, a number four travel brush. This is a Da Vinci uh, travel brush here, Kalinsky uh, brush hairs. Um, has a good point on it, and uh, we'll mix up our colors. So we're going to mix up some uh, brown for the uh, tree trunks, brown, French ultramarine blue for a little bit of the darker side of the... Uh, trunk of the tree and um, so we'll mix up a darker brown there and then um, what else do we have maybe some cerulean blue just to have a little um, mix of warm and cool so your brown is kind of a warm earth color and then cerulean blue is a cooler color and uh, maybe some raw sienna over here too so we're going to mix up some raw sienna here too. So you'll kind of see I try to get a variation of colors going to start with. And that, that looks pretty good. We are going to use quite a bit of darks. So I will, I'll add some French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber. 
like that. So we're going to need quite a bit of darks, and that's going to be um, the main mix right here of the darks. And then we're going to um, mix in some darks over here with cerulean blue, mix with some of the dark. And then we have over here the raw sienna, like that. I think that's a good mixture of colors right now. And uh, let's go right in and start with the shadow side. So the light, uh, incidentally, is um, coming from the right side, low in the sky. So that would be sunset or sunrise. So you can kind of see that the light's coming in almost straight, straight across like this. Kind of looks like that. It might even be a little bit behind us. No, actually, it's in front of us because you see what well, we see all the darks here. So that would mean that the light is in front of us. So we're kind of looking into the light and it's a little bit to the right. So I think we have it correct. We're looking into the light and then it's the light is a little bit to the right side over here coming this way. We're getting a little bit of that light along the bottom of this trunk of the tree here. So that's going to be our uh, insignia for our light, just so we kind of keep an eye on that as we go. And then I'll just start out getting some darks in here. And... Uh, Trying to get the uh, dark started here, and uh, there might be a little more. Um, we can also use a needlepoint brush, so I might get my needlepoint brush here and um, get this uh, brush actually involved here in this painting because um, there's the, the branches get a little finer and we need that little bit of an extra fine point for the brush and that is going to do the perfect job for us here. So you'll see I'll just So what I'm thinking is it definitely works out well if we use the uh, needlepoint brush here to get the uh, really fine limbs and branches at the ends of the uh, tree limbs. And you can see if you kind of give it some some free flowing lines. It looks more realistic, like real branches. Branches are pretty much kind of have a, a waviness to them, curvature. So I don't want to keep those, make those lines too uh, like straight. I want to try to keep the things curving and kind of irregular, the, the lines. Okay, and then I'll, I'll mix up some more paint. So let's keep our paint mixes. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine, French Ultramarine Blue, French Ultramarine Blue, lots of that to get a really good dark there. Maybe some Burnt Sienna too, mix in some warm and cool, like that. 
There we go. And then we'll do some more uh, brush work with our with our travel brush here. So where the limbs are really thick and heavy, we can use our travel brush here. But then when they start to really get thin, then we're going to use that needlepoint brush. That tends to really work great. So we're going to do that. There we go. And those are the thicker, thicker branches here. And, uh, Some of the branches are lighter, so they're catching some light from the light coming from the right here across the painting. So I'm going to try to leave some of these branches And I'm just going to concentrate here, continue on, and I'll go back and uh, grab my needlepoint brush. And then see if I can get some of these finer branches here. That looks really good, doesn't it? Uh, when you get those like finer lines, gives it like a, a really um, interesting variation of um, thick lines over here with the uh, tree trunks over here, and then you have some really nice, beautiful, very thin, fine lines over here with the branches and twigs. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'll come over here and I'll do a little bit of the lighter. So I'll do a lighter wash there and then I'll take some um, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, maybe some uh, Viridian, some sap green, 
some French ultramarine blue. So I'm going to kind of get the greens and blues here and we'll do some water. So I'll take the French ultramarine blue first and I'll go across here. Um, across the horizon line where the ocean is. And I'll keep my hand resting on the paper and then just try to go a little, a little bit at a time for my straight line there. Like that. For the water. Then I'll rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel. And then I'll get some of the green and the cobalt blue and cerulean blue. I'll make this a little lighter, like that. And I'm trying to keep some of those white lines in the paper for like waves, so that we can we can pretend that's the the waves of the um, ocean coming in along the coast area here. A little bit of green, Verdian green, along here, like that. Maybe a little bit of uh, this dark here mixed in with the blue. And then we'll get a little bit of a darker horizon line in the distance there. Just to kind of tie in the dark here with the tree. I'm going to try to get that same dark wa uh, bit of tonal value in the... Uh, that far distant ocean. And I think that looks good. And then we can start working in some of the uh, rocks and things here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put in some of these rocks And that's going to be the mix of the darks, as well as some of the raw sienna over here. So we're going to have some rocks. And uh, And we'll just go right across the painting. Maybe I'll add a little bit of uh, splashing here. And then we have some more really fine lines. So we'll, we'll come back and we'll get our needlepoint brush and we'll pick up those darks again. And then here we have some driftwood and uh, we'll kind of get these in there like this. And we have some of those. Branches and things here, the driftwood. This might be another tree over here actually. Like that. And that looks fine. And uh, we have some more branches over here and maybe there is some driftwood over here I think too and these might be like roots of the tree that are actually just above the sand so those go up into the water area too and there's 
some more roots that come forward like that. And so you can kind of see we're just, you know, working with uh, the photograph here. And I'm trying to see how this uh, photograph looks and then try to just keep referencing back and forth to the photograph, to my painting, to the photograph. So I'm looking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as I go so that I can kind of get some of the main information that I need. And this is kind of coming over here like that. It's like a dark shadow area. And then over here too as well. Like that. Okay, now um, I think it's about time for a break. Let's let's get a break in here and uh, we can actually um, start to finish up here. I think we need to do some sky wash and then we'll do some water here and some sand colors. So we'll do some sand, some a little bit of water over here. We can see water over here by this uh, side of the right side of the tree over here in the corner of the picture. So there's some water over here, mostly all sand. And then there's, a, of course, we uh, have the water already painted in over here. So that's good. And then we'll just maybe put a tiny bit of sky wash in. We have to be really careful with the sky wash though because we have this dark paint we put on first with this tree here, gorgeous tree, beautiful um, tree here. We, we don't want to um, disturb that paint by uh, going over with a wash. So we might have to really um, be careful, but we'll kind of see how we can do this with, so that we don't uh, disturb that uh, those branches too much as we paint the sky. We might have to just do a very minimal sky here. All right, so let's take a quick break and we'll come right back and we'll start to finish up here um, wrapping up this beautiful uh, tree painting along the ocean. Oh, it looks great. Doesn't it look great? Beautiful tree along the ocean, rocks, sand, sandbar, beautiful distant ocean, horizon line. We have everything really looking good here. And again, we're just going to take a quick break and then we'll come right back and we'll finish up. Okay, so we are um, kind of getting toward the uh, last maybe 25% uh, of the painting. So we're about 75% complete right now. I'm going to take a kneaded eraser. This uh, paint has dried 100%, so you, this is really something I always mention, and I've, I've done it myself. Uh, does this make sense? Uh, whenever you go in to use an eraser, you have to make sure 100% that your paint's 100% dry. So you would never want to use an eraser on a watercolor painting. Um, and you maybe some of you have done this like I have. I've done this numerous times where I forget myself. I might be working, it's late, I'm tired, and I, I go in and I start thinking, oh, I got to erase a few pencil lines from my watercolor painting that, that might be there. I like to leave them in most times, but sometimes I do like to erase a few lines occasionally, pencil lines, you have to make sure it's 100% dry because I've done it before too and it makes a terrible smudge if we go over a, a paint, a, like some paint that's still wet. So I made sure this is 100% dry and then now I'm just going to go over with just a quick kneaded eraser over some of these uh, areas where um, There we go. So I think that looks a little better. And it all depends on the, uh, most times I leave my pencil lines in the paintings because I really like seeing the pencil lines on the watercolor paper along with the paint. But this case here with this tree, I think it looks better without the pencil lines, some of the pencil lines there that were left from the branches and things like that. So you have to decide, you're the artist, you'll you'll uh, do your, your um, checks and balances as you look at your painting and you might say, oh, you know what, I really like the pencil lines in there. I'm going to leave them. Or you might say, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I can do a little bit of uh, erasing and just, you know, sort of remove some of the pencil lines that are there. So now um, I'm going to go with a larger brush. So maybe I'm going to go with a um, my uh, Da Vinci um, number eight. So this is a Da Vinci number eight watercolor brush. It's got the um, Kalinske sable hair. And what I'll do is... Um, 
this is a pretty large area here uh, where the um, sand is in the water through here. So I can use a larger brush. That might work a little better than trying to use a small travel brush. Travel brush works great. You can see that the hair on the brush is quite a bit larger on this number eight uh, Da Vinci brush. And this is a Da Vinci travel brush and it's a number four. So this is a number four and a number eight. And you can kind of see the, the differential in, in the size of the, the brush hair. So that really will work good for us. We need to cover some area over here and we don't want to really be working too hard with a smaller brush. So let's get some color here. So we're going to use the same colors we did before. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue. Then we have some of that Cerulean Blue over here. Like that. And that's kind of what I'm seeing there. A little bit of um, Raw Umber too. So I'm just going to Carefully put my brush down and then just slide it on across like that and then come across the other way like so and that looks pretty good. Then a little bit lighter over here. like this, a little bit lighter, so that you can see that's a little bit lighter in tonal value. Like that. And now we're going to have some water. So we'll just pick up that gorgeous uh, Viridian Green a little bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of cerulean blue, all those blues and a little bit of that green. And let's see how we can we'll get some of that water over here. Maybe I'll add a touch of water to my brush. Get a little more water on my palette here. And I'm going to do this. Like this. And it sort of angles this way as I look over at the photograph. Maybe I'll take some artist liberty and make the water a little more than it is in the photograph. And I'll start to work that blue around a little bit here in some of these areas. I think that looks pretty good. Then I'll come back in again and get some of these darks. Which is the brown, French Ultramarine Blue, brown, Cerulean Blue. Let's see if we can get some of these darks in over here. And at, the, and at this point, you really can have a fun time with this because um, the uh, foreground is And these are some rocks, so I'm thinking these are some, I'm using some splashing for rocks. Like this. More burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. And it's darker here, so let's get more dark. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, cerulean blue. And you can kind of see I'm moving at a good pace here and I'm, I'm 
I'm sort of uh, bringing in these lines very carefully. That's where the uh, sand is. So this is sand and mud. Like that. And then I'm going to take the brush and just sort of kind of blend that in a little more. Maybe I'll take some like that. A couple of splashes over here. Splashes up here for rocks, the effect of rocks there. And you can also do some rocks by just kind of dabbing on the more burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. I think there's a little bit of a shadow over here. I see like a shadow sort of over here maybe. And since it's since the, the light is low in the sky, so this would be around sunset or sunrise, the shadows are very long, so we can do this. We can kind of have a fun time getting some shadow type features like this, like this. You could let this dry too over here and then do these shadows on top of a drier paint for this section over here. But I think we kind of have a good feel for everything. On this painting, we've had a fun time. We've enjoyed the process of doing some of the details of the... Um, I think the only thing we would have to do right now is um, a little bit of sky wash. So let's go in here and... I'm going to do a very minimal sky wash here, a little bit of orange too. What I do is if I'm going to do a sky wash over the top of this type of um, uh, scene here where we have all this, I'm going to lift, carefully have a tissue with me the whole time and uh, This way we can blot up once we go over the top of our branches, then we quickly, like that, so those branches don't get reactivated, the paint in those branches, and the next thing you know it's all kind of smudging and looking terrible. Get some paint on there and then right away dab it up with a paper towel or a tissue, and then we have orange along the the bottom of the horizon line here, same thing I'm going to do, get some of that orange on there and then quickly dab it so that it doesn't affect it too much. Okay, so I think that is our best bet when it comes to painting a la prima when you have to go in and go over a section where you have all these lines of watercolor paint and you don't want to have that these these very fine lines of the branches get reactivated with water and dampness and, and then all of a sudden they start to smudge and lose control and then the next thing they look fuzzy and they lose their crispness. So the best way to do that is just we have our um, tissue, our paper towel, you know, and you just 
get some color on there, some light wash, and then right away lift up any excess water. Once you get a little color on the paper, you lift up and right, and then that's all you have to do, and you pretty much have it. That'll 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 work. That's going to be doable. The other thing you could do if you wanted to is do the sky wash first, and then paint over the sky wash. Once it's a hundred percent dry, then you could go over the top with your branches. So either way works fine. I don't mind doing it this way. I actually like to do it this way with the Alla Prima method. But again, you have to kind of you know you. You're the artist, you're going to try different methods and, you know, different techniques of how you're going to do your washes with different paintings and different styles and different things like this. So I just offer my ideas here and I think that's, um, we kind of really was, we were able to actually avoid having any problems with these branches, you know, sort of smudging and getting out of control with uh, watercolor washes over the top because we quickly lifted up everything with our tissue as we went. If we didn't do that, if we didn't use a tissue and lift up as we were working with our sky wash, then all these branches would become, uh, they would become wet with water and paint, and then they would start to like get all blurry and, and uh, start to smudge and look really, you know, not good, unpleasant looking. So we were able to avoid that by uh, doing some quick thinking um, as we go. All right, so thanks everybody for uh, joining along on this painting, this composition. I'll try to get this painting one more, uh, this photograph one more time. Thank you, Brenda, for um, sharing some photographs with us, and we were able to use this beautiful tree photograph along the ocean. And um, I was mentioned if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hey, why not? Subscribe on the right hand side below. There's a button that says subscribe. When you do that, nothing. It doesn't obligate you to do anything. There's no catch to it. All it does is the next time you're uh, on YouTube and you open up YouTube, you'll you'll see if I've created a new video, you'll see that my video is on there somewhere in a small little section of your YouTube uh, page saying, hey, Chris made a new video. That's all it is. It's just alerting you that we've made a new video. That's all that the subscribe is really about. And um, it also helps me as an artist. If you're subscribing to my channel, you're sort of like basically giving me a thumbs up in a sense. And you can also thumbs up too on the uh, below here if you like this video. Thumbs up really helped my uh, channel a lot too. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're if you interested in helping out artists that you follow on YouTube, th you know, putting a thumbs up uh, each time you see a new video, if you really like it and you think it's good, that's a great thing. And also too, if you're subscribing to my channel, it's... um just like your way of saying, hey, I'm interested in your artwork, your paintings, your work on YouTube here. I'm going to be following you on a regular basis, so I want to know when uh, your new uh, videos are coming out. So that's all that really is. And uh, But I always encourage everybody so you don't lose me. I know sometimes in the past I've like saw a great video, forgot to subscribe, and the next thing I know I could not find the um, artist that was created that video because I just lost track of it. So I'm hoping you'll subscribe, okay, so you don't lose track of me. And we're having a great time here. We're having a lot of fun with uh, watercolors. We do everything watercolor. And again, we're doing all the, you know, really the classic watercolors that you would love to paint. We're going to always be covering those on a consistent basis. So here we're doing a beautiful coastal scene. We do everything, flowers, still life, portrait painting. We do landscapes. We do boats. We're doing everything here, watercolor. So if you're sticking here on my channel, you're going to learn all the different fun things you like to do in watercolor and uh, then some. Okay, so we'll see you very soon. And uh, you have a pleasant evening and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.